I will like to very uh, share a very interesting uh, paper which was presented by Savana Benninger from University of Arizona in this year's American Diabetes Association and then she has published her work uh, which is very important and which says that oligofructose improves small intestinal nutrient sensing mechanisms via the small intestinal bacteria. And um, this is this slide just shows what we discussed uh, just now that a large number of microbiomes which are there in the gut, they can be changed within 18 hours if you change the food. It is that fast this microbiome change. Within 18 hours of different dietary sources, the microbiome can change, they become more diverse. As uh, Ruchu was saying, the proportion can be changed. And obesity and diabetes are associated with distinct microbiota and that has a potential to impact our energy homeostasis. More high fat diet changes the microbiota which are bad ones. So as she was explaining the proportion of bad microbiota goes up with the bad or high fat diet and then it has a um, implications as more in food intake which increases food intake. Then there is insulin resistance and we know that uh, it pushes towards someone towards development of diabetes and also systemic inflammation and atherosclerosis. So that, that kind of change happens just within few days when you change, uh, someone changes one's food with the change in microbiota. What she presented that a prebiotic oligofructose uh, which is in like fructans, these are non-digestible carbohydrates that can be fermented by the gut bacteria as we were discussing how the fibers get fermented and they create short chain fatty acids. So if someone is given this oligofructose or OFS, then there is a more short chain fatty acids are produced which in turn stimulate L cells and increase GLP-1 secretion. So these are the animal studies in the mouse model with the three groups. One was a high fat, one was a normal chow diet which was as act as a control and the third group initially received high fat then they were switched over to oligofructose or OFS diet. What it showed that these with the kind of a, this food or OFS based food, these after just 9 weeks, these animal models showed a better GLP-1 response compared to high fat diet. Their food intake went down because of high GLP-1. The brain sensing which was mapped in these animals, very nicely done studies which showed that GLP-1 action, how the food intake went down and also which has an improvement. Uh, otherwise whole metabolic improvement in these uh, animal models. Further, uh, it is a big uh, nice study and there are lots of parts of this study. What they did, they switched this microbiota from these OFS fed animals to the high fat diet fed animals. So the microbiota was shifted from OFS treated to the high fat diet and when the good microbiota which was created by OFS in these mouse shifted to mouse which is treated with high fat diet actually there was improvement was seen which was not seen with high fat diet so there is more GLP-1 came when these microbiota were shifted in these animals. Then also one part of the study was very interesting which I found that in germ free animals the microbiota was given from both the type of animals like from those who are treated with high fat as well as from the OFS treated. And this microbiota from high fat diet showed deleterious effect and the microbiome which was shifted from OFS treated mouse models actually showed benefits in the germ free uh, model. So I think it was uh, very elaborate and first that is why it was uh, presented in this year 2020 that such kind of a change in microbiome if you put by these kind of a OFS diet or oligofructose or maybe some dietary aspects, they can change microbiota which improve GLP-1, shows the decreased food intake just within 3 days of treatment and I, I recommend everyone to go through this paper uh, which I will be sharing you with the details. So now I want to ask Rucho about some standard dietary, what changes we can do? Okay. Yeah. 